Hello, my name is Grace Swedberg, and I am a Makerspace mentor in the hub at the Grace Lake Public Library. Um, first off, I'd like to say thank you for your participation in this program. And today I am going to introduce you to the traditional Japanese method of dyeing fabric called shibori. Now, shibori is similar to tie-dye, but it's usually only in one color and usually in indigo. Um, shibori dyeing techniques also create more intricate and detailed patterns than a typical multicolored tie-dye. Um, in this tutorial, I am going to show you three different uh, traditional resist methods, um, as well as show you how to make a simple face mask out of uh, your dyed fabric um, uh, per directions from the CDC. And I will also post a link to the directions so you can print them out. Uh, and I'll put that in the YouTube link. So let's get started. Shibori is considered one of the oldest indigo dye techniques in Japan. Uh, it originated in China with some of the earliest examples of shibori textiles dating back to the 8th century. Shibori dyeing really became more mainstream in Japan during the Edo period from the uh, 17th and the 19th centuries. During this time, the elite social classes were the only people who could wear luxurious fabrics and elaborate colors were discouraged in clothing. Simple indigo dyed items in hemp or cotton were one of the few bold colors that the common people were permitted to wear. In addition, the natural plant dye contains antibacterial, dirt repelling, and flame retardant properties, making indigo dyed garments very popular with the everyday Japanese worker, uh, firefighters, and the uh, warrior class of samurai. Now, as I said before, the main difference between shibori dyeing and tie dye is in these, the intricacy. Uh, shibori artists will use thread to create complex patterns with the thread acting as small resists to the dye, creating small spots of color. Now, regular tie dye is a little more straightforward. Uh, you twist and tie from the center of a t-shirt to create a psychedelic spiral of rainbow colors versus the single color of shibori dyeing. Now, traditionally, there are six standard shibori techniques. So in this tutorial, I will be showing you the Itajame, Rashi, and Kumu shibori techniques. So let's get started. Hello, welcome back. Um, let's go over the materials that you've gotten in your kit and also some additional materials that you're going to need to do this project. Um, in your kit, you received uh, a PVC pole, one either one of uh, one of these three different sizes. Um, the circumference of the pole affects the um, uh, the pattern, um, the distance in the pattern. So I will wrap uh, a bandana of each of these poles so you can see the difference between um, uh, what one wrapped in the, in the narrow pole versus the larger pole. Okay. And you got three cotton bandanas. You want to make sure you pre-wash the bandanas before you dye them to remove any kind of finish that they might have on the fabric. Um, in a little baggie, you have rubber bands for the resist, uh, as as well as string to uh, 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 to root for the resist. Um, two pieces of wood for one of the resist techniques. And this is already dyed because I used this previously for one of the samples. You also have two strips of t-shirt string. And what t-shirt string is, is there, it's made out of uh, thin strips of old t-shirts. And uh, after you cut them, you pull them tight and then the fabric curls in on itself and makes this string. And it's very soft and stretchy. And what's nice about the t-shirt fabric, it doesn't fray. So this is what we're gonna be using uh, for the ties on our face masks. Okay, let's see. Then we have a packet of blue indigo dye, pre-measured um, for the uh, one and a half gallons of water that we're gonna add to it, hot water we're gonna add to it. And I used, okay, since these bandanas are cotton, um, we are going to make sure the temperature is between 140 to 160 degrees uh, when we add this to that hot water. Okay, and we're using, Rit dye, indigo dye. And the reason being um, is that it's very um, easy to find around uh, this area at the local craft stores. But I know there's lots of different types of indigo dyes available. So, you know, you can definitely, if you want to keep, you know, 
create, doing more of these uh, dye projects, definitely go ahead and try different dyes. All right, uh, let's see. Some additional materials that you might want. Well, additional materials that you're going to need to do this project. You definitely need something to protect, some sort of plastic tablecloth or something to protect your work area because this is pretty messy. Uh, and you might consider, you know, an apron to protect yourself too. You will need a gal a, a container, you know, a plastic container or a stainless steel uh, container or pot um, to that we able to contain one and a half gallons of uh, the dye bath. Um, you're gonna need something to because you need to have enough room for the uh, items that are gonna be dyed to move freely. Um, you're gonna need uh, something to stir the dye bath with, you know, pink stick. Um, let's see, rubber gloves, very important. You can get purple, blue hands. Um, you also need like a half a teaspoon of dish soap, and what the dish in the dye bath. And what the dish soap does is it helps to level the dye. According to Rich, it helps to level dye. And in hand, since we're using cotton, you want to add to the dye bath uh, either regular table salt or sea salt, you know, about half a cup. And um, the reason is that this, what the salt does is it um, helps uh, the fibers in the cotton absorb the dye better. Uh, let's see, quick read thermometer to check the water temperature, you know, scissors for cutting the fabric and cutting the twine, um, ruler, pens, and either a sewing machine or needle and thread to sew the mask, um, the face mask. And anyway, let's get started. All right, we're back. Um, there are a lot of tutorials on the internet about shiburi dyeing, and I got most of my information from a blog from Erica on honestlywtf.com blog. Um, this first technique I'm going to show you is called it to jame, it to jame, which is called, it's a shape resist technique, and we're going to use the blocks of wood to and the rubber bands to prevent the dye from penetrating the fabric. So I just, you know, I, I gave you some rubber bands, but I also snagged a couple of ones for my rubber band connection collection, like, you know, these thick ones that they use for asparagus. The first thing you're going to do is take your bandana and you're going to accordion fold it in one direction. So let's start with, and see, I'm going to accordion fold it, I think a little bit bigger than my block. So last time I did it, I didn't get as much blue dye. So I'm gonna just, can you, can you see this? Yeah, you can see this. Okay, I'm gonna accordion fold this, you know, whether you flip it back and forth. Yeah. Hopefully you guys do a better job at this than I do. <laughs> All right. Okay. And then I'm going to accordion. Okay, I accordion fold it in one direction. Now I'm going to accordion fold it uh, this way. Uh, the, the, different, the opposite direction. So you're getting a like, small packet of fabric. And as I said, I hope you guys fold better than I do. <laughs> All right. All right. You know, it's, and, and it's, the neater you are, obviously, the better your lines are going to be. But, but with, like, with regular tie-dye, some of this, uh, there's some spontaneity to this. And it's, it's always going to be like, um, it'll be a big surprise when you unravel it. So, when you take your box... And sam or sandwich the fabric between your two blocks, your wood blocks. And then what you're going to do is bind it um, with rubber bands. And so if you got a larger square and you got more bands, you got you're gonna have more rubber bands, which are resist. So this is a resist, so the dye can't get to the fabric, and then the rubber bands will be a resist. And so the more the larger the, the the resist, the more rubber bands, you got more white shape showing. And if you got a smaller shape, less bands, you get more indigo showing. So now I'm going to wrap this 
with uh, rubber bands. And I'm going to use a combination of thick. I'm going to actually put a thick one in the middle. And, and, you know, whether you put, you know, depending on the size of your resistor, how many rubber bands, and I'm going to put some little ones on the side of this. So uh, now I have this little bundle, and you can see I have uh, two thin rubber bands on either side of the thick one, all tucked in. And you can do this with other objects, like maybe two metal lids or plastic lids or you know other odd shaped wood, or using you know binder clips or clamps. So you know you can be very creative with this uh, binding technique. Um, where the rubber band is, it's going to prevent the dye from getting to the fabric. So this will be this will make a kind of a window pane rectangular pattern. This is called it is um, uh, the shape resist technique. So the next technique I'm going to show you is the arashi uh, pole wrapping technique. Um, arashi is the Japanese word for storm, and when you unwrap the pattern of um, the pattern that you get from wrapping around the pole has these thin kind of jagged white lines on the um on the indigo so i guess that looks kind of like a storm um you're going to take you know whichever pole circumference you have obviously i'm going to go ahead and use a small one and you're going to open up your bandana so it's diagonal to you right now depending on the length of your pole this is this looks like it's gonna fit all the way, but if your pole is shorter, see this one's shorter. It's not quite the the width of the uh, bandana. You're gonna wanna have your right side, the right end of the pole closest to the uh, to the right point. And so let's go back. I'm going to start with the point on the bottom. Let's see, make sure I have enough room on the uh, on the right side, and then just start rolling around the pole so that that right corner is um, on the pole. Don't worry too much about the left side because we're going to be basically scrunching the bandana down toward the right. So I'm going to keep rolling until the bandana is completely wrapped around the pole and actually I'm gonna put a bit. I'm gonna put a rubber band around the middle of this to keep this rubber band or a piece of tape to keep this point down here while I start wrapping the um while I start wrapping the um other end with the twine. Oh, that's good enough. So on the bottom, on the right end, what you can do is take your twine. And you're going to tie a knot, a double knot at the end of the bandana, at the end of the pole to keep the bandana on here. This is where it helps to have, if you catch somebody with a finger <laughs> to hold your knot down. Okay. Then what you're going to do is you're going to wrap the twine around the pole about six or seven times. And then you're going to scrunch the fabric down like that. See? And then you're going to pull the string tight to tighten up the twine. And then you're going to go ahead and wrap again. Four, five, six, seven. And you're going to scrunch the fabric down. Oop. Careful not to scrunch it off the top of the bottom of the pole and pull tight again. So you're going to continue to do this until you wrap the entire, uh, uh, all the fabric on the pole.
until you scrunch all the fabric down. You know, wrap, scrunch, and then pull the twine really tight. Get rid of my rubber band now. Yeah, it's the challenge is to keep it from coming off the end. And then, you know, tie off the other end with another double knot above the, uh, the fabric. Scissors. Okay. Check my bottom. So then you've got all your fabric, bandana fabric, all scrunched on one end and pulled. As you can see, you know, it, it all, you, you know, when it, even if it hung, hangs off on the left side, you can see it gets, gets scrunched here, so it doesn't really matter. So then set this aside and we'll do the third technique. The last binding technique I'm going to show you is called the kumo. Um, it's known as the pleat and bind technique, and it basically involves binding the fabric in close sections to create spider-like designs. So you're going to do an accordion fold again with your uh, bandana. And actually, I'm going to make it slightly bigger so it's even. <laughs> okay. Okay, and I mean, you get more precise patterns if you're more precise in your folding. Yes, that is true. But this particular pattern or this particular technique is has got a lot of leeway to it. So you don't have to worry about it so much. So what you do now is take and get this long strip and you could do, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take pinch fabric along the side of this and bind it with the rubber band. So even, I'm gonna do an even. So I think, let's say, if I start here at the middle, And then just wrap. You know, pinch a little bit of this and wrap the pinched area around with that rubber band. So where we're wrapping, the rubber band is going to create the resist, and it will be little white spider-like lines. So I'm going to do that. Let's see. Evenly. Let's say I could get. You want a two in here? Because I can get two more in here. Now you're going to bind the other side of the strip um, in um, opposite side in staggered sections. So basically in between here you're gonna you're gonna bind in here and in here. 
and then you go on the end of this. So let's put, let's do this one first. So you got opposite, in between and opposite. Now go back and see if you can bind even more on each of these little nodes. You know, do another second ru rubber band underneath that first one and bind it um, going toward the center. You know, tightening, um, wrapping all, all these things up toward the center until you can't. Um, bind any more fabric. So just keep going on either side in toward the center as close as you can until you can't bind any more fabric. Then when you've got like two rubber bands wrapped around each pinched node of fabric, you're going to just um, gather it up together in a bundle and then wrap a, the center up here with another rubber band. So you get this kind of little compact bundle. Okay, now it's time to dye. Now that we've finished wrapping all of our bandanas, it's time to mix the dye. I already went ahead and filled my container with a gallon and a half of, of very hot water. My, you know, my tap water is not hot enough. I went ahead and just boiled um, water in order to get it to temperature. And I think it's, I got it at 156. So that work, that should work. That's between, you know, because we're looking for 140 to 160. You know, an alternate method is actually to use a stainless steel pot and actually have it simmering on the stove while you do your dye. Um, but anyway, next step, we're going to add that dish soap. So for that gallon and a half, we're going to add a half a, a, of a teaspoon of dish soap. And then we're going to add half a cup of salt and the just soap is to keep to it's to level the dye is what the manufacturer says and the salt is to um, help the fibers of cotton absorb the dye a little bit better so put those suckers in And then I am going to cut open our dye packets, you know. Oh, also, don't forget, you got to put your gloves on before you do all this stuff. Put your gloves on. Cut open my dye packet. And put that all in. This is... This is a four teaspoon, four tablespoons, two ounces of the Rit Indigo dye. Okay. So I'm gonna stir the dye. Now I've already gone and soaked my um, wrapped bandanas. You can, you know, either just in the, go to the sink and run them with the water, or you can, you know, stick them in a bucket and let them soak. So now we're gonna squeeze out the excess water. I went ahead and wrapped a couple extra. I had an extra piece of wood. Figures since we're gonna make a dye, might as well take use use all the dye or take advantage of the dye. 
So I went ahead and made extra pieces to um, extra wrapped extra bandanas uh, with different resists in order to dye them. So in they go. Now, there's my my little ones. This one I folded a bandana and triangles, and I did the kumu um, treatment or technique with the rubber bands. And here's my little wrapped kumu one. Now, as I was saying, I went ahead and wrapped the Arashi technique on all the different types of poles, the three size poles that um, I had. Okay. And if this doesn't fit, you know, you notice that it's a little deeper than the die, what you'll do is um, take a cup You know, take a cup and pour the dye on top of it. Okay. So we're supposed to stir slowly and continuously for about 10 minutes. The manufacturer says sir, stir slowly and continuously the first 10 minutes. Um, they're the most critical because we, stirring helps ensure that we get an even color. So we'll just sort of move our little sticks around in this kind of stirring motion and then use my stainless steel cup to they get dye on the top parts of this um, of the poles here. Okay. So now according to Rit, you need, you need to leave the fabric in the dye for at least 10 minutes up to an hour. Um, the longer it's in the dye bath, you know, the darker is the color. Um, basically, you're gonna take out the bandanas when it gets to the darkness that you like. Now, I've read, you know, once it gets to the darkness, so you like, I've read people who said on the net that says they will leave the, you know, they'll cover, they'll take the dyed pieces out of the dye, right? When it gets to the color they want it, and then they'll wrap it in plastic bags and leave it overnight so the dye sets more. So yes, you certainly can do that. Um, Ritz suggests that you just um, um, take them out and uh, after you, they get to the color that you want and just rinse them out afterwards. So they also recommend to prevent, to help with the color not to bleed and to set the dye is uh, use a color fixative. They, they sell a, a color fixative. And, you know, I was looking at re reviews on the internet and somebody did a head to head video and they really couldn't see much of a difference when it came to um, keeping the dye from fading. So because the felt color fixative will keep it from fading. Um, so it's up to you if you want to, you know, go out and get yourself some of this, you know, chemical fixative. Now, I've also found on the internet um, that you can actually keep the dye um, for future use. You know, for instance, let's say, uh, you're doing curtains or bedspread. And actually, that's what I'm going to do with this extra dye. Um, I still have uh, dye I saved from the batch test um, samples that I did. And I'm going to combine it and I'm going to tie dye my bedspread, which turned pink due to being washed with a, a red tablecloth. Silly me. And uh, so I'm going to do that with uh, with the rest of the dye. And they said that you can, you can keep the dye. And I, I've had the dye for like you know, a month or so. So, so I've just jarred it and kept it in jars. So we'll see how well it works to dye. Also, other people uh, have frozen the dye uh, and, you know, you know, packed it in freezer bags and put it in the freezer. Um, you would just have to, you know, before you reuse the dye, you would have to heat the dye up to the 100 and, 
uh, 40 to 160 degree temperature in order to get the dye to set. Those are looking really good. Um, let's see. Okay, anyway, I think I'm gonna let this, this is, these are looking pretty good, but I think I'm gonna let this sit for, for at least 30 minutes. I'm pretty sure these bandanas are 100% cotton, but like my first test batch, I think it had polyester in the cotton and it didn't, the dye didn't set as well. And they recommend letting it sit for at least 30 minutes. So I'm going to let this sit for a little bit um, and then I'll come back. After your bandanas are the color that you want, I let mine sit for 30 minutes, you're going to squeeze out as much dye as you can and then rinse them under cool water until the water runs clear. I don't know if you can see this, but there's a, you know, there's dye coming out of here. Maybe you can see better in one of the poles. Yeah, see, you can see the dye running in. So just basically rinse all your bandana pieces until the water runs clear. Now you can go ahead and unwrap them now. Or you could, uh, as that one person suggested, leave them covered in a plastic bag uh, overnight just to make sure the dye sets a little longer. Up to you. And like I said, I'm going to save the dye to use um, on that blanket I was talking about. After you have rinsed all of your bound pieces, now comes the best part, the unwrapping. This is uh, the It's a Jame uh, Shape Resist technique with the box of wood. And this should come out in kind of a, a grid pattern. Let's see. And this is, I left it in there like pretty long, but you can start seeing the, the shape resist. So I did leave it in pretty long. So, oh, look at that. <laughs> it picked up the uh, dye from the blocks before. I guess it's not a good idea to use old blocks, but it actually kind of makes it look kind of interesting. The thing is with most tie-dye, you really don't know what you're going to get until you unwrap it. But as I said, this came out in a very cool grid pattern. Cool. And then it's got these weird little two little corners with the uh with the uh, uh pattern of the uh of the other blocks. So, note to self not to use these again. The next unveiling is the, um, the Arashi technique, uh, the ones that were wrapped around the pole. And as you can see, some of my strings came apart. So that's gonna, that's gonna tell me that some of this is gonna be bluer in the middle than I had originally planned, but that's okay. That's part of the uh, surprise of doing tie dye. Now, some of the techniques I showed you earlier, uh, some of those kimonos with those elaborate, um, uh, scenes are done with one of the other di different techniques uh, of, of Shiburi, uh, Shiburi where they actually sew patterns into the cloth and then the thread will act as a, as a bit of a resist. So let's see what this looks like. Can I get this to slide this off maybe? And Now, if you had nylon or cotton, obviously it looks like I have got cotton. Some of this is cotton yarn. It's going to obviously pick up the dye, but if you don't, if it's nylon, it won't pick it up as much. So let's see. Um. And if you do, I, I mean, I'm lucky that I don't, I can unwind these without having to cut the string, I mean, because that is an option. You can 
um, cut the string. I'm just always terrified that I'm going to cut the bandana when I do that. Okay, I got small, medium, and large. Oh, this is pretty cool. And can you see the gradation? You know, since it's smaller, it wrapped around more. Um, it wrapped around the pole uh, more times, and you could. Can you see the little uh, graduated steps? So that's the medium. Oh, and look, this one you can sort of see the see the. Um, the wraps, the gradations of wraps. But this is the one, see, you can see here, this is where uh, it started to unravel and it's, it picked up more of the dye and there's less uh, resist there. And this one, I think, is the large circumference pole. Yeah, and it's even Yeah, and then and you, you've got a very dark edge because it started unwrapping. So I guess it helps to have somebody holding the string for you when you're tying. But still, you know, three different pole diameters and you get slightly different um, patterns for each one. And this is our last uh, shiburi technique, the, uh, the, the kumo where we, uh, where it's called the pinch in and uh, bind technique. So this is where we were wrapping everything with the rubber bands. Right. This is kind of cool. Before you wear the bandanas, you're gonna wanna wash these um, in cool water, uh, tumble dry low. Now you're gonna get, you know, some fading because uh, the, the indigo, the blue color, is, it looks darker when it's wet, obviously. Um, but hopefully, this will be pretty... It, the, the color won't bleed too much. Yeah, and actually, um, when you wash these the first time, wash them by themselves with a, maybe an old towel to catch some of the extra dye. And you can either, you know, tumble dry these low or hang dry them. I'm into clotheslines. I think this might be my... I'm really liking this one. Uh, I think this might be my favorite. And this actually is uh, closer to what a you would see for a traditional tie-dye, but isn't this really cool? While the bandanas uh, that we just dyed are in the wash, I'm gonna quickly show you how to make a, a cloth face mask uh, out of the fabric that you have dyed um, using the directions from the CDC. Now, the CDC says to cut two pieces of fabric six by 10. And to save myself a seam, I think I am just going to fold this in half to the um, six inches. About six inches there. And I'm gonna cut the fabric along this pattern. And so I'll basically have a square but it saves myself a, you know, a bottom seam. So then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to turn this inside out. Okay, and I'm gonna sew a top seam. I'm gonna sew uh, a quarter inch seam along this, this uh, these two pieces at the top of the, two, of the piece. Then what I'm gonna do is that after I sew it, I'm gonna turn it back inside out. And if you want, 
you know, you can top stitch the top and the bottom. So it doesn't fold in on itself when it's, you make it into the mask. But what we're eventually going to do is then we're going to turn the ends in a half inch and then another half inch on either side. These are going to be, this is going to be the casing, the casing for the, um, the ear tip for the ties, you know, like that. See, see the ties, the casing for the ties. Once you finish sewing the face mask together, um, it's time to string the um, t-shirt yarn through the casings that you've sewn on either end of the mask. So what I usually do is get a, you get a, a fairly large safety pin and you, you hook it through the end of the string and then you find the edge of your casing and then run the, uh, push the uh, safety pin through you know, you're gathering, you're pushing it through, and then, and then the safety as you as you move the safety pin through the casing, it'll pull along the string. Okay, and then, you know, fit it to your head. You know, tie a knot. You know, fit it to your face. And then, you know, knot it off, do the other side. And then, you know, fit the mask to your face, you know, tie the uh, face ties where it's most comfortable. You know, like I said, there's a little bit of stretch where it's more comfortable for you to wear. Oops. I'm having a hard time tying here. And then, um, then once you figure out where this fits, then you're going to just slide the ends of the, uh, uh, the knots into the um, the casing. Sometimes that takes a little bit of work to do. And then you have your Shibori tie-dye face mask. I hope that you enjoyed this program and that you continue to experiment with Shibori style tie-dye.